Hey everyone, welcome back to The Fin Factor. I'm Paul. And I'm Aaron. This is episode number 17. 17. That's right, and this week we'll be, uh, first of all, issuing an apology to Eric Carlson. <laughs> um, we'll also be doing a little bit of an injury update, talking about the uh, defense pairings. Mm -hmm. And uh, we'll review the last week's games, and we'll talk about our hat giveaway. That's right. Okay, you ready to start the show? Ready. Good, because it's provocative. Gets the people going! What? <laughs> Blades of Glory reference there. Oh, so, yeah. right. <laughs> anyway, um, Eric Carlson, if you're watching, <laughs> I humbly apologize for uh, ever making it sound uh, as if you were not defensively capable or <laughs> defensively responsible, uh, that you were a one-trick pony, that you only scored goals and brought the puck into the zone uh, effortlessly, had beautiful skating, but were just um, inept on the other side of the blue line. Uh, I apologize wholeheartedly. I've seen you make so many good defensive plays, uh, <laughs> stick checks, poke checks, just yeah. breaking out passes. Um, just it, it's a it's a beautiful thing, and so I apologize for ever having doubted you uh, on the defensive side of the puck. Uh, for the record, I never said those things, so <laughs> I'm not apologizing because I always believed in you. So <laughs> there you go. And, <laughs> and liar. Anyway. <laughs> Okay, let me just rewind real quick. Sure. Episode one, uh, it would never work because neither of them know how to play defense. <laughs> anyway, so you saw something really cool by Eric Carlson that you uh, maybe read a little bit too much into, but we'll see. Maybe. Uh, he was interviewed recently, and I can't remember where it was. I saw it on the internets, interwebs, whatever. Okay. But yeah. uh, <laughs> they were asking him about um, about his contract, and probably he's probably going to be answering this question all year until he signs yeah. an extension. Uh, but it sounded like to me <laughs> that he tipped his hat that he signed an ex or didn't sign, but Handshake is deal. going to sign. So we talked about this the last episode, I believe. Um, he can't sign until after the trade deadline. Uh, he, he, he can. can't. He can't sign an eight-year right. extension until the trade deadline. So or until after the trade deadline. So mm -hmm. um, he could sign anything before that. But I think, or maybe it's just wishful thinking yeah, yeah. that uh, he's he has a handshake deal in place for an eight year extension and he can't announce it or tip his hat or anything towards it right. um, until then. But however, I'm gonna read this quote and I'm gonna pull up my computer real quick. Um, so the question was about the, uh, you know, going to free agency or if he's gonna sign, he's kind of like, I don't know, I'll probably go into free agency. And the follow up question was, have you really been able to wrap your head around the fact that you are a San Jose shark? And he had a big smile, <laughs> and he said, yeah, yes and no, that I will take, uh, the yes and no, I think that will take a while probably. It might be a couple of years before you even realize how big of a deal it is. A couple of years. A couple of years as a shark to realize how big it is to be a shark <laughs> and not an Ottawa senator. So that's kind of how I read it. Um, I mean, again, it could be just wishful thinking on my <laughs> part, but um, to me it sounds like he has a deal like imagine you signed a deal an eight-year deal mm -hmm. can't tell anyone about it right or maybe even not sign but you handshake deal yeah can't tell anyone about it you're not supposed to um and someone asks like a question that kind of throws you off because it's not a direct question of right you know whatever like <laughs> oh you know what's it going to be like to be a shark in a couple years you know and you kind of be like oh it's gonna be great yeah oh wait <laughs> i uh, i don't know if you know? that's what happens right maybe so that's kind of how i read into it <laughs> right what do you think? Uh, I I just it, it makes me think of like Mark Ruffalo and uh, Tom Holland being uh, Marvel people. I get you know it, who yeah. I'm talking about? Yeah, yeah the actors. Um, and they can't keep their mouth shut, and they constantly or accidentally I don't know leaking. if it's or not like leaking. Yeah, um, you know stuff about the movie, stuff about the set, whatever else. And um, those are more blatant. I think this maybe not quite as blatant. Might be reading into it, but I love what you're reading into, so uh, I just, I'm on board. Hockey players in general, when they give interviews, they're kind of yes. bland and boring, so that's why I'm kind of reading into it more, because right. he kind of gave an answer of an accidental answer, that's, answer in my that's opinion. That's fair enough, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so moving on from that, we have an injury update. Uh, real quick, just wanted to go through. Uh, Ryan Getzlaff, actually, yep. was, was in the news. He got injured uh, in the game, in their last game against mm -hmm. Arizona. Um, we don't know what it is yet. Yeah. At least while we're filming this, they haven't announced anything and he's being evaluated. Mm -hmm. uh, so far, not on the IR, so we don't know if it's going to be a serious issue. However, the Ducks are just devastated with yeah. injuries. They got 
five forwards out now. Uh, Getzlaff, Perry. I think Kasha was out too, wasn't he? Uh, Kasha. No, it I'm was not sure. Uh, actually, it was. Uh, I'm forgetting his name. He was a rookie guy. Um, Kessler. Yeah, Kessler's still out. out yeah. Yeah. Um, I mean, five of your twelve forwards. That's right. going to hurt. Um, so Anaheim's going to be. Yeah, they're still in first. Mm -hmm. They got two wins so far, <laughs> but we'll see how long that lasts. It's not going to last. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Jonathan Quick also uh, got hurt in warm-ups. Practice or warm-ups? Was it practice? Oh, yeah, practice. My bad. Practice. Yeah, it was uh, something with his back, I think, is what they he said. He had a right? back injury, but yeah. they put him on IR, which mm -hmm. is more of a serious thing. So I, if they put you on IR, that means you're out a minimum of seven, seven days. days. Um, and that's more of a serious issue because that's yeah. minimum seven, especially for goalie. Mm -hmm. um, Usually, if it's just a minor thing, you don't want to put him on IR. Um, maybe just have him, if it's minor, have him as a backup. Right. If he needs to go, he could jump in. But, mm -hmm. um, yeah, that that could be a potential breaker for yeah. L.A. I mean, they called up, uh, I think it's Jason Campbell. But um, he's an okay goalie. I don't he's, think he's not Jonathan Quick. Yeah, right. no, he's Jonathan Quick. Oh, not that he's the greatest <laughs> goalie. But he's a good goalie, and uh, that's a very tough replacement. And yeah. L.A. is going to be hurting. I agree. And uh, other tough replacements, Joe Thornton in the news today also. Yep. Um, he had a uh, swelling in his knee, uh, one of his two reconstructed knees. I was making the joke earlier that um, the uh, hydraulic fluid uh, <laughs> might have uh, burst out of and, and leaking through his knee. And out that's of causing his the swelling. bionic leg. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, yeah, I mean, it's we're laughing about it. But, you know, Joe, we hope you do get better and we hope it's nothing serious. Um, uh, Aaron had um, explained engine reserve being out for seven games or seven days. Seven days. Seven days. Yeah. Um, if you're placed on long term, it's 24 days or 10 games, right? That's yes, correct. Um, so we hope that it doesn't get to that point. We hope everything's okay with with Jumbo and uh, he's able to to come back in and and you know produce. Um, we uh, we miss having you out there already. <laughs> it's really what it comes down to. So. Yeah. Yeah. This could be a glimpse into the future of next year too, next season. Yeah. Without Jumbo, assuming that he retires or, yeah, I don't know, maybe go somewhere else. I mean, I don't think he'd go anywhere else. But yeah, I don't see him going anywhere else. I think uh, he'll retire probably right after we win the cup this year. Yeah. Yeah. Totally. Good. Yeah. Okay. Cool. So um, <laughs> the other thing I wanted to bring up actually in, in terms of uh, Sharks players was, um, and I I think it was um, Brett Hedekin or maybe it was Jamie Baker who had said it on the radio. And what I heard him say was, you know, this is a great year for Justin Braun and Brendan Dillon. This is the year, especially for Brendan Dillon, where, you know, he's not playing with, like, an older player like a Roman Polak. And he's not playing with a younger player like a uh, Dylan DeMello, yeah. right? DeMello was solid, don't get me wrong. I'm not saying he wasn't. But he's able to play with a guy like Justin Braun, who's a lot more seasoned, a lot more reliable, He's been there, done that. He's had a really good, solid partner to learn from, and he's going to bring that to that pairing of Braun and Dylan when mm -hmm. they're paired together, right? So it's going to be a really good thing, I think, for for Brendan and Dylan. Definitely. Um, with Braun, my my whole take on Braun being separated from Vlasic is this is his time to shine. Mm -hmm. This is the time where you're going to see him not playing in Vlasic's shadow, if you will. I think he gets he doesn't like I said before he doesn't get a lot of the accolades. He's a very good defensive player, but Vlasic kind of gets the the spotlight in terms of that duo and I think with Braun being separated and playing with somebody else you're going to see how Braun is really a super solid defensive pair, uh, player and you can play him alongside of Dylan and be just not just as successful but be yeah. very successful and that's our, again we talk about first and second and third pairings and whatnot right this is supposedly the third pairing of Braun and Dylan. I mean, that's that's a pretty good pairing. I think that's the best pairing in the league. Yeah, best third pairing. In sure. The league. Yeah. 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 Uh, it's funny you said playing in the shadow of of uh, Vlasic because to me Vlasic is always playing in the shadow of <laughs> Burns or or anyone else, and he's always yeah. an underdog for um, getting attention mm -hmm. or for uh, Norris Trophy, right? You know, nominations and stuff. So I think it's funny that yeah. you said that. Well, and, and it's funny because it, when you it, nowadays people know Vlasic is one of the best defensive players in the league. Yes. So I don't think he's as underrated anymore. People have their eyes on him, right? But I still think he's underrated. I just I think, think that he's he's not in the spotlight because of the offensive side. Right. Right. Uh, I think that's part of it. The other part is he plays in the Pacific Division yeah. where 
A lot of people on the East Coast Very are true. sleeping when he plays, so they don't Very get to watch true. him. Yeah. However, playing on Team Canada, I think, helped uh, boost his yeah. his presence. His visibility. Yes, yeah. definitely. Right. So, yeah. Yeah, that's good. So, um, I'm really looking forward to, to that pairing and seeing what they can do. Obviously, we have some other defensive players to talk about as well, and uh, we'll get to that uh, shortly. But um, we kind of want to do like a week in review. Again, we're not going to be doing recaps, but we will talk about the games and whatnot. So, yeah. we're going to call this the, the week in review because we're not going to do it necessarily after every single game. We're right. going to do our, our normal Sunday recordings, yep. and we'll just talk about how they looked over the course of the week. So, go ahead and kick us off. So, the first game against... Uh, Anaheim. Uh, I thought the Sharks looked looked okay. Sure. They weren't they, offensively. I think they were great. Mm. Uh, defensively, they were kind of still a mess. Mm -hmm. And Jones in the back just had a had a bad game. Yeah, you have those stinker games every now and then, and it just happened to be the very first game in the home yeah, opener yeah. of the season against your division rival. So <laughs> good timing, but yeah, it is what it is. Right. Um, I thought that they possessed the puck and. Um, Granted, going back to Anaheim and their injury woes, uh, they were missing a lot of guys, yeah. and, and so half their forwards are AHL guys. Um, and you could tell. You can just, especially the mismatches, which we're going to talk about later um, on the third line and everything, and the fourth, even the fourth line. Mm -hmm. um, Anaheim just seemed outmatched offensively. Um, the Sharks just couldn't score. Gibson's a great goalie, and they yeah. couldn't get anything, well, not anything, but they couldn't get much past him. Um, I think uh, Anaheim capitalized on the Sharks' mistakes in the back, and they paid the price for it. Yeah. Um, against LA, it's a little bit different story. They, you could tell they got their their stuff together compared their to Anaheim. <laughs> yeah. So they they looked better. <laughs> they um, they were playing better. They were again possessing and, and outplaying right. offensively against LA. Um, LA did have, I think, a little bit better quality chances than uh, they've built bit more sure. better players. Kovalchuk looked okay. He didn't. He's not his superstar self that he was last time he was in the NHL. Mm -hmm. Still a great player though. Uh, he made some plays that I was like, wow, yeah. he's still got it. That's nice. kind of cool. Nice. Cool. Fun to see, yeah. I guess, as a fan, a fan of hockey. <laughs> um, I think um, uh, they they played well, and then and then overtime they just took over. Right. Uh, just absolutely dominated. Yeah, and I didn't. Unfortunately, I didn't get to see the uh, the game against Kings because I was actually at the Barracuda game that night. So um, we had the kids, and yeah, and we get the opportunity to take them. Which I'll stop right there for a second and uh, check out <laughs> the new Antoine Bibo uh, bobblehead there. So uh, we couldn't figure out what to do with the stick. Like it doesn't go anywhere. So I was kind of resting it on his uh, his blocker, and it seems to work right there. But anyway, uh, so yeah, new bobble got it from the um, from the game. We'll see because how long of the, this the one kids club, lasts. that whole membership. Yeah, we'll <laughs> see how long it lasts before it breaks. Uh, I'm hoping um, at the end of the show it's still there. We'll see. He kind of looks like Coacher's <laughs> dirty mustache on his. Oh, really? Yeah, look at this. <laughs> There you go. Anyway, um, so yeah, I was I was uh, at the uh, Barracuda game, which was actually a lot of fun. Uh, Dylan Gambrell came out, scored two goals in the first period. He ended up with the game winner because they won like four to one. Nice. Uh, so that was cool. Uh, going back to the Sharks, though, so I didn't get to watch that game, but I did watch the Ducks game, mm -hmm. and I agree. There were some some soft goals that were let in. There's also a, a few goals that shouldn't have even been opportunities. There's a, a pass that went cross crease through Burns skates, I think, and then it got like tapped in. Oh, and it's it got right onto. Was it gets left stick? Yeah, uh, probably. Yeah. yeah. I mean, he, he so couldn't have been injured one game previous. Right. You know, come yeah. on. Thanks a lot. Gets left <laughs> best. Anyway, so um, I mean, stuff like that where it's going across your crease and it's going between your defenseman and skates. Like you can't really blame your goaltender for that. So yes, he had a couple goals that were soft. Um, and we talked about the the backhand one that everyone's upset about. The way I see that goal is, uh, you know, at the angle that that shot was at. Um, when you mark the trajectory, it's like he puts it in like a pocket that's you'd have to get into just that size to be able to to score that goal. And it by luck of of course, I don't think Manson it was Manson who, who shot the puck. He's he's not, <laughs> not a goal, a goal scorer. scorer, especially not from the backhand uh, that far wide. It was a very lucky goal, but at the same time, I mean, it it was laser precision in terms of where the puck needed to go. And yes, Jones was out of position, but. Ninety-nine times out of a hundred, that's hitting the post or going wide, right? It was just, it just everything yeah. happened to fall into place there. But, but yes, we, he was out of position. We also talked about earlier during our live segment that um, I think it was during our live segment. But Jones 
was kind of cold in that game. Yeah. Because he wasn't getting as many shots. Gibson was... 15 total shots on goal. Yeah. yeah. So when, when a goal... And you can talk about this. When yeah, and, and I had uh, on the live I had asked any goalies yeah. to back me up, but apparently no goalies were watching this. <laughs> so uh, more goalies need to watch this. Come on, guys. Uh, so anyway, uh, I, I, what I was saying was when you've only felt like 12 shots on goal for the entire entirety of the game, um, it's hard to get into a rhythm. It's hard to... to you know, really get going with all that. You've got John Gibson over there stopping everything in sight, but it's he's getting the feel of the puck. It's it's hitting him, right? Mm -hmm. um, and he's kind of getting into the flow of the game, whereas Jones is kind of sitting there getting cold, waiting for something to happen. It was almost like possession hurt him yeah. <laughs> in that in that sense, you know? Yeah. I'm not saying, you know, allow a bunch of shots on goal on your goalie because that's not what you want, but it certainly doesn't help when you're not feeling any pucks for the entirety of the game, right? It's so, also the first game of the season. Yeah. You know, you're going to get not so much the jitters, but yeah. you're just not quite game speed yeah. and ready and concentrating. And it's more of a mental thing, I think. Sure. Than and and I, I don't want it to sound like I'm making excuses for him because I'm really not. I mean, it, it, it is what it is. You have a bad game. Hey, you get called out. You have a bad yeah. game. You know, but there are a couple things where we need to, as fans, we always want to, you know, oh, he's sucks and trade him and blah, whatever. Nah. There are times where we need to just kind of calm down, take a look at the play for what it is, and sometimes uh, the puck goes in and it's not his fault, and sometimes it is, and hey, that's just the game of hockey, right? Yeah, sometimes you lay a goose egg. Yeah. Just happens. So, um, that was my take on the first game. I, unfortunately, again, I didn't get to see the second, but I did catch the overtime, which was awesome. Um, they possessed the puck real well. LeBanc comes on the ice, and the Kings hadn't had a chance to change. Mm -hmm. And actually, you can talk about um, how they're, they've they switched sides and everything now, too. Yeah, so um, I think it's the last couple of years. They they three on three overtime, mm -hmm. but they also switch sides just like they do after the first period. Um, so you have a longer shift change. So if you want to sub a player out, you have to go on the complete other side of the ice. Um, so what happens in those situations in the second period is you kind of tend to see more goals being scored because of this. So if you get a team that possesses like the Sharks do and they're possessing in the offensive zone, the defense, in this situation, the Kings, couldn't get their guys off the ice and get fresh guys on. There was no stoppage. It just continued and flowed. And when the Sharks couldn't get a shot or they couldn't do anything and they wanted to change their guys, like in this, again, this situation where they scored the goal, LeBanc could have kept the puck in at the blue line and didn't, and he skated it out to keep possession. The mm -hmm. other two guys got off. Two fresh guys got on. He passes it to Couture, goes to the net, Couture passes it to him, and he scores. And the Kings guys were gassed. And after the game, they interviewed LeBanc, and yeah. they asked him, you know, did you guys on the bench know that? And he goes, oh, yeah. Oh, we knew. Yeah. So I think that's part of their game plan because they have the skill set to possess the puck, especially three-on-three -three overtime. You're going to see that. I mean, Carlson and Burns in the back end, they just mm. switch them out, you know. <coughs> yeah. um, in fact, I think they played together in the beginning. Yeah. In the first, the first, uh, in the beginning of overtime. Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> I think that was the first line. I can't remember, but that's hilarious. Um, yeah. I'm not. I'm not sure if Couture um, changed lines or not because he was on the opposite side boards and he was waiting at the blue line. It was a. It was a beautiful play by LeBanc, bringing the puck out of the out of the zone, into the neutral zone. Almost, I think, it was around center ice, yeah. and he was just kind of coasting and, and stick handling in the ice and slow and just kind of looking over shoulder. And I don't know if it was Carter, but one of the Kings came kind of like right up towards him. And again, knowing that he's gassed, he just all of a sudden like does this really quick turn, just a nice little power move, and then passes the puck off to Couture on the board. So Couture brings it in, and LeBanc's off to the races. Mm -hmm. I mean, and it was just, uh, again, he had mentioned Kathy's power skating, which we'll yep. plug him right now anyway. <laughs> so um, yeah, Kathy's power skating, uh, who Essen Gallo had talked about um, helping him out with his early hockey career, and that's mm -hmm. the lady that he went to to get his training in. Um, LeBanc referenced the exact same person. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, his, his, he just took off. He just blew right past uh, at the, the blue line. And then Couture makes a nice little pass in there, and with his stick being held, LeBanc was able to pot it in. Mm -hmm. And uh, Quick was not too happy <laughs> about it on the way off the ice. I yeah. guess I uh, slammed his stick down, huh? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, he was ticked off. But that's <laughs> Jonathan Quick's pretty emotional right. guy. We saw him earlier in the game. You didn't get to see it, but earlier yeah. in the game, at the end, I think it was the end of the second period. Um, uh, what? Not Carlson. Uh, Goudreau hit a guy up high, kind of took him, hit him, kind of blindsided him a little bit, and it was right in against the boards okay. behind the goal. And then Quick skates over and gets in his face and is yelling at him and starts kind of, kind of punching him, getting in his face. Sure. Um, and then they ended right. up, yeah. Then they <laughs> ended up calling a penalty on Goudreau couple minutes later like they announced it after they came back from the period so it's like come on yeah but 
yeah, Quick, uh, we've seen the history of Quick and uh, Couture, mm -hmm. I think, a lot when Couture's in front of his net. Yeah, I remember yeah. him uh, hugging Couture's leg. Yeah, and in, in the playoffs. In the playoffs <laughs> and sitting on him, like wouldn't let yeah. him get up a couple of times. Yeah. <laughs> Quick, man. There's some great memes online about that. <laughs> um, yeah. Did you want to share the Drew Doughty meme? Oh, sure. Yeah, yeah. we'll post this up right now. <laughs> Go ahead. Um, I saw this on the Facebook group, and I laughed pretty hard <laughs> at this. Uh, so earlier in the game, Timo Meyer kind of slashed from behind, slashed Doughty a little bit on his leg, and it didn't look, on TV, it didn't look that right. bad. But Doughty went down, and he was down for a while and had to get helped off the ice. Uh, he eventually came back in the game, but um, this meme popped up, and it made me laugh really hard. <laughs> so, yeah, we'll share that one. Nice. Yeah. So uh, so the last uh, couple things here, I think, on, in terms of weekend review is we want to talk about the three main horse defensemen, if you will, I guess, and uh, their time on ice, which was, was yeah. pretty outstanding. The yeah. Stats. Yeah, if you want to go ahead. Uh, so I looked at the last game, and I was curious to see, you know, what kind of ice time that was going around with, uh, with all the defensemen. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, Carlson led with, I think, 28 minutes. But this is including overtime, so it's a little bit, right. a couple more minutes more than normally. Um, and then Burns and Vlasic were, were right behind him, all with close to 30 minutes. I think um, you said um, Carlson had 29 and the rest had 25? No, I think there. even higher. It was higher than 27, 27 28, 27. yeah. Um, and then Dylan and Braun rounded it off. But okay. if you, <laughs> uh, we talked about this in a couple of episodes before. You have Carlson, Burns, two Norris Trophy winning defensemen, and then you have Vlasic, who should be a Norris Trophy right. candidate at mm -hmm. the least. Three of those guys are on the ice practically the entire game. <laughs> One of those three is on there the entire yeah. game. So that is extremely difficult. Where it, like Drew Doughty is one of the top defensemen in the league, and he plays roughly 30 minutes a game. Right. And that's tough to play against yeah. a guy when he's out there half the time. And now you're playing against the Sharks who have <laughs> somebody out there the entire time. At least one, sometimes two. And we've said it before, too, it's a great problem for Pete DeBoer to have. Yes. You know, we were trying to figure out, well, what's the line's going to look like? <laughs> Who are we? <laughs> Pete DeBoer's a head coach. He's one of the best coaches in, I mean, in the world. That's I, when you get to the point where you're a head coach in the NHL, you're one of the best coaches in the world, period, yeah. right? So I, I think Pete DeBoer, like, goes to bed every night and giggles <laughs> to himself, like, <laughs> what kind of lineup am I going to have this week? This is going to be awesome. <laughs> I just, you know, yeah, great. That's it's a great awesome. problem, like you said. Yeah. Yeah. So one of the other things I wanted to touch on was this idea of uh, lines and numbering your lines. And we, keep, we were talking about um, EK9, right? Uh, Vander Kane uh, being a third line winger. And why would you have a $7 million player on the third line? Mm -hmm. And I mean, I got sucked into it too. And I made the mistake of, of saying, you know, is it you know kind of strange that he's on the third line? I was like, I think I was asking Kevin Kurz on Twitter yeah. or something, right? And, you know, what it comes down to is... How do you how do you evaluate which line is your first, your second, and your third line? Is it by how much they're getting paid? Is it by their goal production? Is it by their time on ice? Because if it's by their time on ice, then you don't know who your first line is and, uh, until after the game's done. Because right. then then you know how much ice time they've had. Um, and we've kind of fallen into this you know EA Sports NHL 19 trap, yeah. where we give people a slot and a number on a team. Uh, this team and many other teams in the league are deep enough that. We, there shouldn't we shouldn't be calling them the first line, the top line, the second line, the third line, right? They're, or the bottom line, bottom pairing, bottom six. We don't want to say bottom, obviously. So it's it's one of those things where I think we kind of need to break ourselves out of that. And one of the things I'm going to try to do, at least on this show, is to talk about the lines by identifying them by their centermen, right? So the jumbo line, or the couture line, mm -hmm. or the sumello line. Um, all these guys are going to get roughly the same amount of minutes. Um, you're you're gonna see production coming from all three lines. It's not really fair to say that the Sumella uh, line, Donskoy and, and Kane being on it, are like third line guys because I mean all those guys are so pr supremely talented, mm -hmm. and they could they can certainly play you know the the most minutes of any line, and we still be productive. I mean Kane's got a couple goals, like you said, Kane's yeah. one of the one of the best looking guys on the ice so far. Uh, out of the games that we've seen played, again, yeah. only two. There's 80 more to go. Let's yeah. not jump to conclusions, but still, I got he jumped yeah. out as a guy who definitely was uh, a standout player for mm -hmm. both games. Um, I think he was hustling in both games, and um, his shoulder injury that he had at the end of uh, the playoffs last year is definitely gone because he's oh man, he scored some beautiful <laughs> goals. So um, he's definitely feeling it. He's he looks 100. percent He looks great. Um, he looks dangerous every time he's on yeah. the ice, which is great. 
um, I think that third line, if you will, sure. uh, the, the Sumella, Sumella line, line sorry, you. we just yes. talked about this. Yeah. The Sumella line, <laughs> I think, is uh, creating a lot of mismatch right. um, opportunities. Um, and we saw this last year in the playoffs with mm -hmm. Hurdle and, was it Hurdle, Meyer, and Donsko, I think, were together? Okay. Um, they were mismatching and they were producing and Hurdle had six goals in 10 games mm -hmm. in the playoffs because other teams could not match that. The depth. Yeah. Right. So yeah. you have you have your top defensive guys. The other teams have the top defensive guys versus the jumbo line. Right. Then your second best guys against the couture line and then you have your third best guys against Kane. Like that, that's best just... Best luck. Yeah. Yeah. And it's showing. Um, they are possessing the puck and yeah. creating opportunities and looking dangerous and they're scoring goals. Yeah. So and, and the interesting thing to me is uh, Sumella, he doesn't look out of place. And again, mm -hmm. only two games in, so let's not jump ahead. But I Only mean, two games in his NHL career. Yeah. It's only his, he's only played two games in the NHL. That's also true, yeah. Yeah, it's amazing. No, he's, and, he's done great. He's, yeah, he's been, he's been playing really well, mm -hmm. admirably. And, I mean, the chemistry that he's had with Donskoy, um, I know we were saying that, you know, people want to say that because they're both Finnish. They actually do have pretty good chemistry on the mm -hmm. ice if you're watching them play. And then you throw in a guy like Evander Kane on top of that? Yeah. Oh, man. Yeah. No, I, I think a lot of teams are going to have a hard time matching up with our our top nine, if you will, or yes. you know, our, our, our first three lines, uh, however you want to uh, phrase it, right? Yeah. And uh, speaking of uh, lines and whatnot, we touched on um, Dylan Gambrell uh, being called in. I'm just kind of curious now with, with Jumbo being on injured reserve mm -hmm. and Gambrell stepping in, how do you see them kind of shaking those lines up? Do you think they're going to mess with anything that's been working or are they just going to plug Gambrell straight into that line with Meyer and Pavelski? And then um, who cares what, if that's your third line or your first line? or what? It's just three good lines that can score and maybe yeah. Gambrell's part of that. I mean, he, maybe he's not. You know, Gambrell's not guaranteed to... He got called up, yep. yes, but they also have Chartier, who That's true. Um, could get his first NHL game. Mm -hmm. Gambrell has three NHL games under his belt, so it's not like uh, he has a huge, you know, disparity of... He's a veteran. Right, he's a veteran, <laughs> a three-time veteran, so... Um, <laughs> <laughs> a three-game veteran. Right. Yes. Yeah, yeah. That's what... Yeah. Right. <laughs> um, so I... We, don't, we won't know until tomorrow, right. or if you're watching this. Today, I if guess. we get this out, maybe we we'll get it on time. On uh, <laughs> tomorrow morning, they're playing in uh, uh, against the Islanders, so we'll see the lineup then. But a very interesting 10 a.m. game. Yeah. yeah. Right now, in practice, uh, I think it was Goudreau was up on the top line. Top line was up on the. It was the Goudreau line. No longer the Jumbo line. With Pavelski yeah. and uh, Timo Meyer. Yeah. So um, it, I think I think what I would do if I were a coach, which okay. I'm not. What I would want to do <laughs> is those other two lines are rolling. Yeah. Couture's line Keep and Gam uh, uh, Sumella's line. Couture Sumella, yeah. 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 Those, t those two lines are rolling. Keep it. Mix up that fourth line if you're going to have Goudreau up there. Because Goudreau has actually looked great, too. Sure. He's one of the other players, uh, yeah. other than Kane, that has looked amazing. And he just signed an extension with the Sharks. Yeah, two years. So um, he's looking great. Um, I you know, reward him. Put him on the top line, see what he can do. He's going to bring a lot of energy and speed to that line. Yeah. Uh, he's going to work his tail off. So I think um, I think that's going to be a good look. Yeah, so uh, Logan Couture, very happy for his buddy, uh, Barclay Goodger. I remember mm -hmm. he had said that, um, you know, that he's really proud of him for the work ethic that he's put in and that he's getting his shot now. He's getting rewarded. <laughs> yeah, and uh, again, we had talked about Barclay, you know, kind of making that shift to playing center, and mm -hmm. it took him a year in the AHL, and he was patient. We've seen... I think we've talked about another player who just uh, didn't want to put the time in and, you know, left. Barclay Goodrow. Yeah, yeah and he went left to play to the in KHL, I think. Swiss League or something like oh, that. Yeah. I forget. He went home. Um, was that? He oh, Noah Rod. Noah Rod. That's who it was. Yeah. Yeah. So he he went home. Well, Barclay stuck it out in the AHL and now it's paying off for him, right? Mm -hmm. So good on him. Yeah. But um, I think the last thing then that we'll do here is we wanted to go ahead and kind of plug our whole hat giveaway yeah. thing, if you will. So, uh, yeah, we'll come back to the hat that's been right over here. Here's the hat. And a again, one of a kind because we're not making these anymore. Right. Um, I only made it for myself 
and it was uh, it was too small. It was it was a mistake in the ordering process, and I ended up getting the uh, larger version of it. That's the one that you see me wearing. I'm not wearing this hat. You will not find my hair <laughs> follicles in there. Um, but yeah, so we're giving this one away. We gave away two large shirts. I figure, okay, a small hat. We can kind of cater right. to both sides, right? Sure. The big and the small. So um, <laughs> yeah, one of a kind. Um, we will be selling gear as well. Uh, that's going to look a little bit different than this, but that's a whole other story. In any case, there's a link that we will be putting down here somewhere. Yep. And it's also going to be over next week. So you have this whole week right. to get your entries in. And there's multiple ways to get more entries, which you'll see in the link or yep. when you click on the link. So when you click on the link, it'll you can enter into it. You subscribe and you add on uh, Facebook or right. on Twitter and Instagram, or wherever else, yeah. and you get some extra entries and whatnot. So uh, best of luck to anyone and everyone. Chase, I don't know if you've sent that picture in of the shirt yet. Not yet. No, okay, Chase, got to take that picture, bud. Come and help yeah. us out. <laughs> and then whoever gets this hat, same thing. We'll be looking at you to, to get a little picture of definitely uh, for us. So. We'll throw it up on the show. Yeah. Also, anytime you see us at a game or anything, please, we're not superstars. Yeah. <laughs> Just come over and say hi. It'll, it'll be awesome. We'll take a picture. It's with happened you. already. Yeah. We posted the pictures up on Instagram. You ran into somebody at the bear Barracuda game, and I ran to somebody at the Sharks game. That is correct. Actually, I ran to two people at the Barracuda game. One nice. was uh, someone from the Discord channel. Uh, I think it was Cameraman something or another was the, the name of the, or his, his handle. And then another fan who didn't tell me who he was at all. Just <laughs> was like, hey, I'm a fan of the show. Sweet. <laughs> so I uh, took a picture with them, too. So anytime we can get those interactions with you guys, we love it. Uh, also, don't forget, before we shoot, we generally put out that we're going to be going live as well for about a half hour or so. Yeah. And we love chatting with you guys then as well. So uh, be on the lookout for that. Good? Right. All right. Good. Okay. Thank you guys very much for tuning in, and we will see you next week. Next week. Bye-bye. Bye. Hey, everyone. Thanks for checking out the show. You can support us by following us at The Fin Factor on Twitter and Facebook. You can also find us on Instagram as at Fin Factor. If you're listening to us as a podcast, please, please, please give us a five-star review. And if you want to support our show, share our episode with your friends. Please leave us a comment of what you thought of this episode, and if you want us to cover anything else, let us know.